All right, so your calculus teacher has just introduced something called first principles and is telling you to find the derivative of a function using this monstrous mess of mathematics. What exactly is the first principle? Where do you even, where does it start? come from? Well, fortunately for you on this channel, I happily take on the challenge of making math like this suck less. But how do you make something that is so inherently sucky not suck? Challenge accepted. I think we can pretty much all agree that the first principle's definition of the derivative is a beast of a math. But here's the thing. In this video, I'm gonna show you a simple trick that's gonna make this a lot simpler. We're talking about making calculus like grade nine math simple. Stay with me here. It's gonna get weird before it starts making sense. You know those mustache glasses disguises? Well, what if I told you that this mess was actually the equation for the slope of a line in disguise? Yes, this very equation that you have applied millions of times to calculate the slope of a line. The only difference here is that this familiar equation will calculate the slope between two points on a line, whereas this little number will calculate the instantaneous rate of change at a given point on a curve. We should probably unpack that a little bit. Let's imagine that you have the curve of some function like this. And let's say you have two points that lie on this curve. As we move along our curve from left to right, this is our first point. So we're gonna give it coordinates x1, y1. And if we continue along our curve until we hit the second point, we're gonna give that point coordinates x2, y2. Now, if you wanted to find the slope between these two points, all you'd have to do is apply the slope formula that you are super comfortable with. We take the second y value, we subtract the first y value, and then we divide by the second x value minus the first x value. But you already know that, don't you? So how does this all relate to the first principle's definition of the derivative? Hey, you've learned quite a bit since you first learned how to calculate the slope of a line. So why don't we relabel our curve with some function notation and see what happens? Instead of x1, y1, we'll call our first point x, f of x, where f at x is just the y value associated with x. Now imagine that you move some distance that we'll call h from that first point to the second point. So we move along that curve h units until we get to our second point. Since we added h to our original x value, the x value of our second point should be x plus h. And the y value that is associated with x plus h should be f at x plus h. To tie all this together, let's imagine that you were going to calculate the slope of a line joining these two points using your y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 definition of slope. Our y2 would be this f at x plus h, while our y1 would just be f at x. And if we look at our first principle's definition of the derivative, we have our f at x plus h, and we're subtracting f at x. We then take x plus h and subtract x. And sure enough, our first principle's definition tells us to take x plus h and subtract x. And of course, these x's are gonna cancel out, which leaves us with our first principle's definition of the derivative. But wait, what about that random h? Well, here's where things get kind of calculus-y, because in this formula, we're asked to find the limit as h approaches zero, whatever that means. Well, remember that h is the distance between these two points. So if I make h approach zero, what I'm really doing is closing the distance between these two points until they're so close together that they're almost the same point but they never will be because you can't find the slope of a line passing through one point, but you can find the slope of a line passing through two points that are infinitely close together. So in the end, this horrible looking first principles definition of the derivative allows us to hack math so that we can find the slope of a line at a single point, sort of. It's an estimation that we call the instantaneous rate of change. Now applying this thing that's a totally different monster because there's all sorts of kinks that you need to know if you want to successfully apply the first principles definition of the derivative, which is why you are going to want to head over to this video right here, right now. I'll see you there.